To connect the two together, there's mm -hmm. a character besides Launchpad that appeared in both uh, yeah. named Gizmo Duck. And um, Gizmo Duck was like a robotic police officer, or <laughs> robotic duck kind of with a wheel. Uh -huh. So I, I, for feet. Now I was kind of thinking it might be fun to have a giant Gizmo Duck like suit that you get into, and then the wheel. <laughs> You're standing inside of it, but the wheel is down below your feet, and yeah. it carries you oh, man. Uh, on like an action adventure ride that where you're like chasing awesome. bad guys through Saint Canard and Duckburg. Yes, that is awesome. I just looked up a picture of Gizmo Duck, and the listener, I would yeah. recommend doing this as well because that design is yeah. so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I remember him for sure. Um, yeah, and you could definitely do that. That sounds like making a ride vehicle out of that wouldn't be too hard. And mm -hmm. so maybe it's just a one person riding inside of that. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, wow, that'd be thrilling. And you could do all <laughs> kinds of the more like high stakes, more actiony things that they do on these series, but you don't want your park guests to do firsthand. Mm -hmm. Just put yeah. them inside of Gizmo Duck, and they can do it, you know, within that ride vehicle, within the safety of that, they can still yeah. experience all the, the thrills. That's great. Yeah, that, that was like the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, I want to do this. And yeah. now I'm, I'm sad that it's out there and I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fun. And I was picturing... He uh, could also go on that, um, what was it called? The Rat Catcher? Is that the name of uh, Darkwing's the, uh, motorcycle? Motorcycle, yeah. yeah. So maybe that ride where you drive on the bridge could, could be mm -hmm. done within the Gizmo Duck vehicle as well. Like You can kind of pick which ride That's vehicle true. you want to go in. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, that could be kind of fun. And then, and then also, you know, any kind of chase scene that Gizmo Duck, you could ride inside of him to do. You could also ride on the Rat Catcher. Uh, mm -hmm. to kind of go through that same path, that same exciting chase. Oh, yeah. Cool. I, I, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I know that you're a big mini golf fan. That's true. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And, uh, so I was thinking for DuckTales, there was an episode of DuckTales called Earthquack yeah. <laughs> about, about how uh, there kept being earthquakes that were happening and Scrooge's money bin was about to fall into the earth, or maybe it there was a crack and all the money fell oh, into the earth. Oh, no. But anyways, they go underground and they meet these things called terraformians. And they're these multicolored um, <clears throat> things that roll into balls. Huh. And I was thinking it might be fun to have a mini golf area <laughs> that's kind of like a dark light area. Yep. And, um, and basically the terraformians are the golf balls and you're, you're whacking them through ever uh, – <laughs> through the different things maybe have like little ducktails related elements to the course mm -hmm. of course yeah the Cor course, course of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome so are they the same size as the ducks no well they're they're yeah they're equivalent okay and which so, could be tricky yeah but i'm thinking like we've already got the uh the like shrinking ray from earlier and we right. could just have you know a growth ray like yeah whatever um <laughs> so you need to help get all of the terraformians, you know, they need to get back into their, their home or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe one of the, these earthquakes, uh, like launched them up into the air and they're like kind of lost in the town and you have to like, you know, get, that'd be really cool. And then it's almost yeah. like a, a Godzilla kind of thing or like a tokusatsu show where there's like the, you know, the fake buildings that are supposed to be like, you know, real buildings, but you're, you're like giant monster size is what I'm trying to say. And you have right. to like walk through this town and trying to, to lead all these guys with your <laughs> golf club back into like their that. different holes in the ground where they came from. So yeah, yeah, that that's a fun, fun theming for mini golf. I like that. And yeah. uh, I, I'm really into like next gen, you know, mini golf kinds of things, but it'd be cool if you could, you could project or have little screens inside of the buildings. And so maybe, um, you know, one of the ducks has like some advice on, or like they're teaching you how to, what your objective is. So they, they pop up in one of the little windows and you just like look over and they're like, you know, they're the, the size of like your fist. And they're like uh -huh. telling you like, Hey, this, if you could do this for us, that'd be really helpful. They're like setting up the story. It'd be really uh -huh. cool. Yeah. I, love I like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Wow. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I need, I need to watch that episode too. Cause this, <laughs> this sounds really fun. 
<laughs> so have well, you seen like a ton of episodes of the show? I've seen probably about 80% of the show. Wow. Um, a lot of it whenever I was a kid and yeah. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, a lot of these shows are available on uh, Amazon now and iTunes. Cool. And also you can buy most of the DVDs, like mm-hmm. 27 episodes per disc for 10 bucks. Wow. So that's awesome. pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Definitely for anyone who, who loves those old old series. I think having them on DVD or Blu-ray is the best option. Um, I'm trying to collect a bunch of like early adult swim stuff and Scooby-Doo and it yeah. just feels so good to have it on physical media. Like there's something about it that's, that's better than Netflix, you know, cause it's, well, A, you get like commentary and like extra, you know, deleted scenes and stuff sometimes, but B, you mm-hmm. can just have those. It's not up to Netflix whether you can access them or not. You know, it's, you're, you're taking control of it a little bit. Yeah, and and unfortunately, Disney being how they are, mm-hmm. um, the DVDs, the Disney animation DVDs didn't initially sell as well as they mm-hmm. would now, probably, because yeah. the demand is much higher now than it was when they released them 15 years ago. Right. And so Darkwing has, like, one volume yet to be released that may never happen. Wow. DuckTales has two. Tailspin is the only one that's complete. Huh. You know, so it's like... It's it's a little frustrating, yeah. and it's a little heartbreaking being a fan and wanting with that completionist attitude, right? But, Collect uh, them all, yeah. Hopefully someday there are a lot of campaigns to make it happen. So cool. I'm glad. I love that the fans have a voice. You know, with yeah. the power of the internet, that's that's such a cool thing. It's awesome. I know. I like 2016 was such a good year for me getting both Crystal Pepsi and Ecto Cooler back in the oh same year. Oh my god! Yes, both of those <laughs> things I'm super into. But I love Crystal Pepsi and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I tried for so long to find Ecto Cooler, and I someone told me that you can only get them at like certain movie theaters, and so like I was trying to find, I was going to all these movie theaters, couldn't find it, and and uh, I just didn't want to order it online. I wanted it to be that experience of walking into a store and just finding the thing. I just love that for some reason, and mm-hmm. so I would just go to every grocery store I could find, and eventually my fiance just ordered them on Amazon. She's like, you know, we we had to submit to the Amazon overlords. Like <laughs> it's the only way to get you what you need. And yeah. I was so thankful to get you know a box of it. It was it's great. Um, is there anything you'd like to add to our park? Um, you feel pretty I just good about had it? one. Yeah, I think I'm pretty pretty good on everything. I just had one idea. Uh, for Mighty Ducks, yeah. and that would be something that I feel like is not really happening anymore, and it kind of breaks my heart, but bumper cars. Oh, cool, yeah, yeah. I think it would be really cool to have hockey puck-shaped bumper cars. Nice. That is really <laughs> cool. Um, And this could be during the part where the park guests are really small. They mm-hmm. could go into, like, a you know full-sized hockey arena, because the Mighty Ducks are, like, human-sized ducks, right? I think so, yeah. They're pretty, a lot of them are pretty, like, beefy as well. Like, they're, like, yeah. hockey players. So having uh-huh. the guests be really small, like, riding in a puck, that could be really cool. Um, I, the building, you know, the ceiling that high would be really difficult for, you know, the, like, old-school bumper car design where it's, like, you're connected to the ceiling with those little electrical right. thingies, whatever those are called. Um, right. Like, I mean, creating the illusion of being really small in a, you know, super huge, like, hockey arena would be really difficult. But we could kind of force it a little bit or fudge it a little bit and Mm -hmm. just make motors within the vehicles themselves. So it's almost like a go-kart kind of setup, but feels and controls like a bumper car. That works. That's really cool. And a a perfectly round vehicle would be really fun. It would be kind of hard to drive that, I think. Like, it, it would be a fun experience, you know, like part of the thrill of bumper cars is that the steering is so awkward and like everyone's a bad driver, but right. if you're driving in a totally round vehicle, that'd be a totally new experience. And you'd like get into a lot of accidents you weren't planning on, which would be fun. That's, that's yep. the thrill of bumper cars. I like that. That's great. <laughs> and you could even make it like a, a sport almost like there's like a, a, a meta game while you're playing bumper cars, you're trying to get in the other team's net or something. Like, oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's nets at the end of each side and, yeah, if you're in, you know, the the blue pucks, you're trying to get that direction or whatever. That'd be, mm-hmm. that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> I was kind of thinking, like, it might be neat to do, I don't know if they could do this, but, like, a slick track with bumper cars. Uh-huh. I mean, I know that it's already pretty slick, but yeah. to take the elements of a slick track go-kart yeah. and mix it with bumper cars. So oh, the more you hit people, the more you spin and right. swim into others. But you can then definitely it gets kind of that. high risk. Yeah, I think maybe just get a get a little bit of a better like harness system so that like you're not like getting whiplash and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. that could be super fun. I mm-hmm. love that, and that makes it more feel like you're on ice. You know, like you're a puck on the ice. And I, 
I like the idea of having it indoors too, because you can actually make it feel cold like a hockey arena. Yeah, exactly. And it'd be a nice way to escape the heat of the day. Right, right. That'd be great, and it would be fun to just watch too. You know, maybe there's like stadium seating on one side, and people can just like hang out in there and you know watch oh, yeah. the kid on the on the bumper cars. That works. Yeah, it's like the it's like the tiki room in a Disney park. You know, yeah. where it's it's nice and air conditioned and dark. And yes, you can just sort of and you could sit. have a concession stand in there, and oh mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Yeah, cool. I like that. Um, Another thing I think we should add throughout the whole park is a lot of walk around characters. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I like the idea of like getting autographs, but I was thinking of maybe simplifying that a little bit where you're trying to collect something like maybe it's stamps in a little stamp book or like just some kind of collectible element. Because I think uh-huh. so many of these, these worlds, like it's hard to capture the full essence because there's so many characters and so many plot lines and so many episodes that took place in each little town. It's hard mm-hmm. to represent them well with, you know, like, a, a small number of attractions. So I, I think agree. being able to like allude to some of those or reference some of those other episodes with just a, a simple like collectible and it mm-hmm. could be like, you know, a smartphone kind of thing or a physical like book that you go around and, and you find this little icon and you get a stamp for that icon or something like that. Like it's almost like a geocaching kind of thing within the park it would be kind of like a fun little game for people who aren't super thrilled or don't really want to ride the roller coasters. Right. Um, they could they could add an extra little like collectible element. I just mm-hmm. I don't know. I love these these five worlds are really fascinating to me, or or six worlds if we're counting Mighty Ducks. Um, and I think it's kind of sad that we can't fit everything into the park. You know what I mean? Like there's there's parts of each show that each person's going to like and miss from their childhood, and we, maybe we don't get to represent all those. So so adding like little Easter eggs of those characters and those right uh, themes and, and stuff would be great. At the very least, like I mean. I don't think a lot of people like bonkers. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I, I remember like it, one. but yeah, I, I don't have super fond memories of it necessarily. I, I watched it, but I, and I, I don't even think I liked it then, but I love the character design and I love the mm-hmm. way the show looks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it never really held my interest for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and the more I dig, the more I see people trash talking that show and oh, I'm like, man. it's not that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just doesn't but, I mean, compare to the, the, its yeah. predecessors in the Disney afternoon block. I think. Yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, Goof Troop was the last show that I really watched and loved. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a little too hard to make any sort of rides based on Goof Troop, but it might be neat to have just a little Spoonerville area uh-huh. of of uh, the town, you yeah. know, so you can walk through Goofy's house. Have that like a Toontown or something. Or That's cool. Even better, just have a Toontown. It's right. Disney. They can do it. Absolutely. Um, you know, so, and that could be where a large part of the characters who don't have areas built around them could be hanging out, like Max and Goofy and the Mighty Ducks characters and Bonkers and characters yeah. like that. That sounds great. Cool. I, I really love that idea. And I, I think that we don't need to get into, like, the, the later stuff, like Aladdin and Timon and Pumbaa. Like, they're represented in Disney already. They are. We just kind of want to, you know, be a voice for the voiceless. Like, these who are <laughs> underrepresented in the Disney parks, give them, right. give them a home. You know, they deserve it. And they've got you know, a fan, a fan community out there that would definitely like these and a new generation as well that, that has watched these shows in reruns or on YouTube or, you know, their parents have DVDs of it or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I see a lot of people that I work with and they're, you know, I have some Disney afternoon related things around my little cube at work and they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm raising my kids on that. And I'm, oh, I'm man. Like, I applaud you. That's You're doing amazing. the right thing. <laughs> I love that. I think that, that carrying forward your interests into mm-hmm. your kids' lives. That's like one of the reasons why I like having the physical DVDs is like I can pass this on to whoever I want to. I can have a friend borrow it. I can like teach anyone about this show because they have access to it at all times. It's yeah. awesome. I cool. love it, yep. Yep, and I think the importance of animation is uh, it, it matters a lot to both of us, really. All right, so what should we name this park? Do you oh, have any man. ideas? Uh... Disney Afternoon's got to be in there somewhere, right? I I think that's a little awkward that it has a time of day in the title. <laughs> I know, yeah. You, you don't quite want to do that. Um, yeah. Hmm. I know. Is it... And it's... It, we can't say, like, you know, throwback Disney, because Disney's got such a long and rich history. Like, that. Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, we could this... do something about late 80s, early 90s, or after hmm. school. Yeah, I mean, it could... I don't know. There is a certain connection to afternoon, I think, because that's when the yeah. the block aired. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The '90s Adventure Hour. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, but that's I mean, still an hour. Yeah, sure. <laughs> '90s. Um, they are. There's a lot of adventure. I would say adventure is a good word. 
they're all yeah. cartoons, but then again, a lot of Disney stuff is cartoons. So, because hmm. I was gonna say like Disney Afternoon, like Toon something, but it's like, well, a lot of Disney cartoons. That's not really right. descriptive. But I, I mean, nineties <laughs> something would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, this is this is a very difficult park to name. It is. There's, um, there's it's all encompassing, right? So, right. It, it fits a bunch of different properties that are different types of animals, and I mean they're all anthropomorphic animals. <laughs> but <laughs> anthropomorphic animal land doesn't really work either. <laughs> hmm. Um. Hmm. Wow. It's it's hard because like there's not really an umbrella term for that group other than. The Disney, Disney afternoon. afternoon, yeah. And it was already referred to whenever there was a brief uh, segment of Disneyland called uh, the Disney Afternoon Avenue, oh, where they I did parades and had a gummy bears ride and a few other things. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but that only lasted for a year. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could kind of take that mantle and you know build it up a little bit. So it could we can just use Disney Afternoon. I mean, if if they used it, it probably yeah. wasn't too confusing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Disney Afternoon. Unless we like St. Canardsburg. There's so many town names. Huh. Um, hmm. Let's just call it Cape Canardsburg. (laughs) (laughs) We could, like, we could just represent one of those cities as kind of, like, basically make all of the different cities just kind of one city, you know, where there's like different suburbs with the different names. And That's so we true. we could just do that where St. Canard is like the main city and we just call it St. Canard. Um, cause I think that is a really interesting name, you know, gummy Glen, I don't think is that captivating. No. Uh, Cape Suzette might be good. And then that is kind of, it incites like images of a Cape, you know, of like the kind of landscape that we're building with all the kind of water uh, right. aspects of the park. So Cape I, Suzette, I, I think Duckburg is probably the biggest of all of them. Yeah, and so there's can... a lot of ducks going on around That's here. true. <laughs> yeah, if you're scared of anthropomorphized animals, don't go to this park. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. It's right in the title. Duckburg. <laughs> it's pretty much. I like Duckburg. Yeah. yeah. Or Duckburg uh, Amusement Park. Or Wow. I haven't struggled this, this hard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, duck fur. What, what about, like, Disney's cartoon universe? Ooh. That's cool. But I, but then I, you'd be like, well, where's Mickey? Oh, you know right. what I mean? Right. I, I always goofy. did wonder where Mickey was when it came to... Disney Afternoon, he was... <laughs> the yeah, Disney Afternoon. I mean, Goofy was there. Yeah, Mickey should have had a show, too. Yeah, Donald was there once in a while. They did a great comic book series in the um, 90s called... Mickey Mouse Adventures, where he was like a spy. Wow. Uh, and I always thought that would have transferred really well to a TV series. Yeah. But it never happened. Huh. I'm sorry um, to hear that. That's rough. I feel like that would be a cool a cool setup. I might have to track down that comic. Yeah, there was like 19 issues, and they're all actually pretty good. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes he's paired with Goofy. Kind of his, like, uh, Watson. Uh-huh. His, bu- his bumbling Watson-type character. Yeah, yeah. But he travels all over the world wow. in disguise. That is awesome. Well, maybe we should just go ahead and include a you know a, a Mickey attraction based on that comic book, and then we can just call it um, you know <laughs> Disney Cartoon <laughs> Universe, right? Cartoon Universe. Universe. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like that too. Okay. Well, we kind of fell into it backwards, but I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just called the Tooniverse. The Tooniverse. You want to do that? You you done with that? Yeah, that, that works. Okay, cool. That works. That sounds really cool too. Or we so, could even we could even specify call it the Disney Afternoon Tooniverse because yeah. the Disney Afternoon has become synonymous with more than just a time of day. Yeah, it's I a think. it's a it's a brand. So we should just yeah. go with that brand anyway. By the end of by the time we get here, we're like, well, we could have just called it Disney Afternoon <laughs> Land, <laughs> but eh, oh well. Tooniverse well, sounds yeah. fun. And then people realize <laughs> that it's not just a time of day. It's like that specific block. We're talking about the. Disney afternoon cartoons. So that's yeah. where the tune part comes from. Okay. <laughs> right on. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was, that was a challenge. <laughs> I'm glad cool. we got to the bottom of that. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about your podcast that you're, that you work on? Yeah. Uh, it's called Saturday morning rewind. And, uh, we do interviews with a lot of voice actors. We've interviewed 
quite a few people from these shows. We actually just had a whole month dedicated to DuckTales characters, yeah. interviewing some of the remaining voice actors who are still alive. Mm-hmm. And um, You've got tons of big names on that show. Like Over yeah. the years, the, the podcast has been going since 2012, I think. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, five years. Yeah, that's amazing. And so many big names, you know, it's, it's really impressive. Like it's, it's impressive that these people would just be willing to give up their time and be on a podcast. And it's great. Well, these people use their voice for a living, right? True. Uh, Good point. You would, you would think, you would think that, you know, they might not want to do something where they're not getting paid for it to use their voice. But Mm -hmm. honestly, I've only met a couple of them who are jerks. Yeah. Um, for the most part, these are the sweetest people you could ever hope to meet. That's and, great. um, you know, they really, cause they have to deal with a lot being, you know, like the voice of a lot of people's childhood Right. because not everyone is functioning with all of their faculties and, and some people are slower and some people are more aggressive. Some people don't know comfort zones. And, and so they have to deal with a lot of different types of people whenever it comes to doing conventions and doing things like this. So, I think that they are the nicest people you could ever hope to meet. And, um, yeah, they do a lot of cons. They do a lot of stuff, but it's always great to just talk to them on a show. Yeah. And in addition to the voice actors that we interview, which I'm very rarely on the interview episodes, mm-hmm. um, Tim, who was the founder of the podcast, does most of those. But yeah. every, every month he and I have an episode where we sit down and talk about just cartoons that we grew up loving. Mm-hmm. And that's our cartoon talk. Uh, interviews on the first and third Monday, cartoon talk on the second Monday, and then a new show started called Video Game Rewind, where we talk. I'm not on that very often, but um, they it's uh, Tim and Jacob, and they talk about their favorite video games growing up. So a lot of variety, as long as you love 80s and 90s nerdy pop culture stuff. All three of those show types, I've I've definitely started to to get into a lot of the backlog. Mm-hmm. And they're all they're all awesome. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's really fun stuff. Yeah. I I just I love podcasts. I love conversations and like it's so cool to be able to be in on these. It's like you're in on the interview almost. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to to hear firsthand the questions being asked and the responses, and it's so genuine and so direct. And ah, it's a like cool medium. It's awesome. It is, yeah. And if you know, if mm-hmm. you're dealing with great conversationalists and people who are truly friendly, like that makes it that mm-hmm. much easier. So to find out more about our show, you can go to www.saturdaymorningrewind.com or find us on YouTube. They just started a YouTube show. Uh, we're all over the place. Just look in, uh, just look up Saturday Morning Rewind and you'll find us. Yeah, you've got pretty good uh, internet coverage there for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, we're, we're trying to conquer it all. Yeah, and so the YouTube stuff that's like toy unboxing, what other kind of mm-hmm. stuff are you putting up there? Uh, I'm going to be doing a segment on that every now and then where I review... Not so much unboxing, but where I just talk about older toys that I had. I've got a big basket sitting behind me full of toys that either are unopened or may already be open, but they're just really neat things to talk about. So, cool. yeah, yeah. I, I love toys as well. That's one of my other like driving passions. Uh, you know, <laughs> old animation, video games, regular games, and toys. That's and theme parks. Is <laughs> there and, anything and else? Podcasts. Though? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Covered if all you my ask bases. My wife, she'd probably tell you, yeah, there's nothing else for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for being on. Thanks for for being a a, a good sport with that tornado thing. Like that was. Oh, just... dude, that was so much fun. Thank you for having me on. It's a uh, absolute blast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, giving us a review on iTunes or whatever podcast store you use to find these episodes would be super, super helpful. Um, giving higher reviews to a podcast makes sure that it is seen by more people and found more easily. So that would definitely help the show to continue to grow. Uh, 